Hello, Five Minute Friday number seven, and this week we're going to do some engraving in HSM Works and putting it onto the Hyden Hyden Control. And we're going to be using this material, which is Trico. It's a fantastic machinable wax, which uh, allows us to test out some settings and critically not damage some tools if we have a crash. So we'll see how it goes. So we'll start by creating the stock size in uh, SolidWorks, and that's the block of Trico is. 155 by 100 millimeters. So we'll dimension that up uh, by 100. Uh, we'll extrude that into 40 millimeters in Z. And we'll put our logo in this bottom right hand corner to, uh, to engrave. So we're going to insert, we'll select the face first, insert a DXF. And we'll do a separate video on converting the various vector formats into DXF for uh, import into the CAM software. But for now, we'll just accept that we do have that file. I'll open it up. It'll ask us various settings. That's fine for now. The original file that I uh, converted had two forms of the logo. They're both quite large. So I will view it from above to make selecting easier. Highlight the one with the box in. Delete it highlight our final logo, we'll, we'll scale it and we're going to scale it to 0.3 and we'll scale it about this point here. That looks sensible, I'm happy so I'm going to click OK. We'll now move this to the bottom corner ready for engraving. Perfect, so now I've got my CAD ready, I'll exit the sketch and we'll create the cam side. So HSM works is just so easy to use. The, the engraving cycle that we're going to use is going to be called trace. So it's a 2D mill operation uh, called trace. Now I can either select the geometry directly um, here, line by line, which can take an awfully long time. So I prefer to select by the tree. So we're just going to hit the second sketch there. It gives us a rough tool path. This tab here is heights. Now, Unintuitively, that is not heights and depths of cut, that is just retract heights. So if we need to make this operation much more efficient, then we could um, reduce these values here. This is the uh, the tab that really matters because it's going to give us our uh, depth. So I'm going to go with negative 0.5 to begin with millimetres. We'll leave smoothing and feed op optimization on. And when you read the uh, the pop-out tab, it says the G-code file may be reduced by as much as 50% or more by turning on uh, smoothing. So there's no reason not to have that on unless, of course, it's causing some kind of problems on the output. Finally, this is key as well. Uh, we need to turn off Keep Tool Down and the Leads Ins and Leads Out because otherwise we're going to get effectively like a cursive text or joined up writing where the tool never actually picks up in Z and it joins all the characters together, which is what we don't want there. Final step, we'll create a tool. Now I'm just going to modify an existing spot chamfer. Um, I've got a video on creating tools from scratch if you'd like to have a look. So I'm just going to edit this. Uh, tool 15, cutter, uh, it's now 3 mil shank. Let's go 15 degrees, and that should give us something which roughly represents. I'll do this properly for the final cam pass, but for simulation purposes, I'm going to select that tool, accept the default uh, speeds and feeds for now, and we can do some simulation. So the path has been generated. Oh, one thing I need, do need to change is the um, the datum is in the center of the job, and we always on our machine. Uh, typically dating from this this top corner here so we need to edit the job and we're going to say that there is no stock offset because I've created the um, the block to the exact same size as the stock and uh, we're going to use the top plane top corner one and that's going to reposition there ready to go 
So once we've accepted that, we'll regenerate the toolpath and we'll do a stock simulation. We'll start it off slowly and speed up as we go through. So we get an approach. And if we zoom in here, we are actually getting a very fine cut. So that looks perfect. So we'll speed up. And that looks just about right. Now, before we go and set the tool heights, I will just turn on um, the lead ins, outs, and tool down just so that you can see what it looks like. So turn these three on, regenerate the toolpath. Uh, we'll, we'll stock simulate that. We'll zoom in and look at the re result. And we can see how it's all joined up. So we need to make sure that they're turned off for the final um, final engraving operation. So now we just need to set some uh, tool length offsets and uh, put the job in the vise. So with the cam done, we need to set up the tool table on the machine. So this is the usual uh, method we use, using angle plates and taking the difference away. Put it in the tool table, 91.8, um, set it up that as a mill, and then I call a tool zero, which is our HIMA 3D touch sensor. Video on that coming soon. Um, datum that to zero, set it in the control, and that'll update the tool table offsets for the entire tool table. Now we're in a position to, um, to go and engrave the rest of the project. So this is the result from the 0.5 mil cut. Um, lovely definition on the logo, but obviously way too deep on the text. So we'll, uh, we'll change that down to maybe 0.1 and give it another go. So by the looks of things, that hasn't actually made a huge amount of difference. So there's a few things that could have caused that. One is my toolpath didn't actually come in as 0.5 one it still came as 0.5 but i think that's not a problem uh one thing i'm thinking now is perhaps my z height is incorrectly set so i'm just going to test that by jogging to z zero and that's interesting it's actually exactly minus or two millimeters away from uh the, the surface exactly to the thousandth so i've reset the datum uh, just to the current point so we can uh, quickly test it We'll run the program again and see whether that is actually the, uh, the error that we've faced. And that's already looking a lot better. So it does appear to be that the, um, the tool height offset was the issue. So we can conclude that for an engraving process, it looks like the best way to set the, the height is just the old method by uh, checking the, uh, the contact with the surface. So we'll investigate that in a separate video when we look at the, um, the edge finding and datum setting. But for now, I think we've found our settings that we can use to engrave on a whole variety of materials. So it was a good job that we did use the tri-cut machine ball wax. Um, we had two very, very deep passes, which could well have damaged the tool if we weren't in the, uh, in the wax. And the good point is we ended up with 0.1 depth of cut, which gave us a perfect engraving setting. So that's a good learning point there uh, that we can take forward to the engraving of trophies coming up in a future video and any general engraving work. As for the original datum setting, why that didn't go correctly, not sure. That's going to take some uh, investigation, but look out for a future video coming on as datum setting using the Hyma 3D touch sensor. So hopefully we'll have some answers in coming videos. Thanks again. If you enjoy these videos, make sure you like, subscribe and share.